Hey guys, we're back in the shop today. Got Matt on the camera. Gary's here. Uh, I have a sheet of 18 gauge cold rolled steel laid out. And I have a couple of early CJ tools, tool slot bodies um, that are going to be coming up. So I know you've seen me guys make the rear quarters and the front quarters, but today we're going to put the slots in both the front and the rear uh, quarter panels and that was for the axe and the shovel on the military jeeps and the very early CJ two ways so uh, I won't show you the whole entire process again because that video is already out there uh, but you have not seen the tool slots go in and I'm gonna take you through that but uh, I just want to show you how much you can get out of a sheet um, you can get your four panels you can get uh, both front quarters and both rear quarters out of a sheet and out of this center section where it's all rounded in here because of the wheelhouses you can get both tail light panels out of that um, <clears throat> and out of this section right in here we can get the rear uh, the rear cross valance there uh, that goes along the back of the Jeep so you can get quite a few pieces out of one sheet uh, these sheets right now, at least in my area for the cold rolled 18 gauge, are running about $100 a sheet. So it's way up from what it used to be, uh, more than double price. But um, you can get a lot of pieces out of one sheet. So next thing I'm going to do off camera is I'll cut all these pieces out. And uh, then we'll start making a, uh, early, uh, M an MB or early CJ2A side panel. Okay, everybody, I got all the pieces cut out of that one sheet. Uh, everything is cut out, sanded, and ready to be made into panels. I've got the left rear quarter, right rear quarter. Same thing on the front. That's the front panel with the step. I got another one. There's the rear cross sill. I already made it. And taillight panels. Now all of that came out of one sheet of cold rolled 18 gauge, so we're getting pretty far. Um, and now I have another cross sill in the jig. We got Mr. Matt right there. He's going to make his first piece for CJ2A number 8. And this is where I like to start people, because this is one of the simpler parts to make. And there's a little bit of stretching, there's a little bit of shrinking in there. And just a bystander to watch what's happening is Chuckles. You met him last time. There he is with his headphones on, ready to make shit happen. And he is going to give Matt some moral support. Because this is going to be Matt's first part that he makes. So I'm going to have to get over there with him and show him what's happening. But let me get the camera set up and I'll be right back with you. Alright, sharpen that up with the steel hammer, Matt. Yeah. You got it nice and sharp? Yep. Okay, let's hit the other side. Okay, Matt's got the two ends bent over, sharpened up nice up against the buck, and we're going to move on and do some other, uh, we've got a little bit of shrinking on this project, and a little bit of stretching, that's why I like to start guys off on this project, because I get a little bit of both. You've seen me make one of these in, in my early videos, um, but Matt's going to try it here for the first time. This area right here needs not a whole lot of shrinking, but enough where it can get away from you and that section right in here needs to be stretched out uh, gently so it doesn't tear so we'll let Matt have at it and start bringing the edges down doing on this 
Hang in there, let me get that focus good. Okay, he's starting to bring the edges down. Now you see those little puckers there? There's one there and there. That's because we got to shrink that metal in. And we had a nice radius in the corner so we don't rip that area where we're stretching that inside corner around. So, on the outside corners we're shrinking, on the inside corners we're stretching. And I'll try and get you more close-up shots of the shrinking. We'll see how Matt does on it, but the edge is coming down nice, and uh, his first panel's coming out all right. Okay, Matt just stretched out that inside corner, and now he's bringing the center down. And, uh, and we'll sharpen everything up with the steel hammer, but he's, uh, he's got that corner stretched out nice. Now he could go up each side a little bit across the bottom there and up that side, and then we'll deal with shrinking those, uh, those outside corners in. So just keep at it, Matt. Okay, now we're going to have the, most of it, most of the panel is down. Now we've got those corners to uh, shrink into themselves. Um, it's a it's tight radius, but uh, I'm going to set the camera up on a tripod. I'll do one side, and then I'll show you, uh, let Matt do the other side. So let me get set up for this, and we'll go at it. Okay, we've got a lot of, a lot of metal in this corner here. And you see we're going to get some, some puckers in there. And that's what we need to set up. So we're just starting from the back of the pucker and coming forward and that'll set that tuck out. Sometimes you can use this side of the hammer and work it like that and like that, but sometimes you don't have to. I don't know if you can see it, but the metal kind of grew right here. Can you see that, Matt? And when you look on an original two-way piece, you'll see the metal had to go somewhere and it kind of puckered out a little bit. And this is exactly what a two-way would look like. Be a tiny little pucker right there, out. And that's just because as the die came down, the metal had to go somewhere and it puckered out. You getting any of that, Matt? Yep. Okay, we're going to sharpen the whole thing up uh, when it comes off the buck, but that's real good right there. Uh, we're going to let Matt do the other side, and uh, I'll set up for that, and we'll see how he does it. Okay, Matt's setting out those tucks real nice. Coming around the corner real good there. He's setting the tucks out little by little. Okay, and that's how you hand shrink a little curve in there. Matt did it pretty nice. We're going to pop this off the form right now and we're going to go after a little bit with a uh, hammer and dolly to sweeten up any areas that we're uh, uh, that we don't like so let me pop it off to form I'll show you what it looks like okay Matt's just going to sweeten up that corner right there that uh, took a lot of shrinking
stretch it out again, Matt. Good is good. All right, we're going to take a look at that, and I'll show you some close-ups on the camera. I'll try and zoom in and show you the nice areas that are shrunk and the nice areas that are stretched. Okay, I'm zoomed in on that corner that Matt just shrunk. It came out nice. There's the area that stretched. This is the outside of the panel. There's the other side. That area shrunk in nice. Let's look at the inside, Matt. Flip it over. You can see how that came right around. Very nice. All our areas look as original. And this is the very first piece for CJ2A number 8. And Matt made it himself out of a flat sheet. And like I say, this is usually where I start, guys, when they start to build body panels because you get a little taste of everything on this. You get to use the hammer form. You get to shrink a small area and you get to stretch a small area. So it takes some time to get used to how things feel and how things go, but Matt did a good job on that. And that is his first piece. Look at him. He's like a proud dad. Look at him right there. So that's the first section. Um, and we'll move on to some other pieces. Um, and I haven't shown you number eight yet. I know that uh, that we might be getting it here soon to pull a motor out of it. But um, I'll show you number eight when I can. But there is the very first piece to number eight. And uh, I'll take you along on the rest of the body build and show you what's happening. Hey, it's another day in the shop, guys. Uh, I got the driver's side quarter panel done yesterday. But... Uh, I was so involved in it, I didn't get too much footage of me making it. Uh, and I wanted to show you the... This is a very early CJ2A tool slot body. There's the axe and the shovel indent. And my forms, my bucks, if you will. Um, <clears throat> I made them with the, uh, with the correct shape in them many years ago. And... Uh, that's correct for an MB or a very early CJ2A. And basically it's the same thing, uh, hammer form type of setup, and you're just kind of knocking the metal down into those. Um, sorry, I didn't get any footage on that. But um, there it is. And that's a completed panel uh, as it comes off the forms. I have to uh, get the back rounded around to the tail light panel. But uh, I've got the other one on the forms now, and it's just about done. And the last time I showed myself making uh, these side panels, I got a lot of questions. And this is where most guys got screwed up. Uh, there's a lot of material here to shrink. So uh, the sheet metal's between these two. We came up, and now we got to go over. And... I've done the part that needs some heavy stretching. This whole area here really needs to be stretched out carefully so you don't split this. Um, so just take your time and bring that around gently. Um, and from the comments and from the guys I've talked to, they were able to get that section okay. But uh, the heavy shrinking here uh, by hand um, got the best of a few guys and they started overlapping metal there and stuff. And uh, A lot of guys tell me they had a hard time with that. So I'm going to try and show that again, uh, how I shrink that metal right down, right into itself. And uh, I'll try and get the camera set up with some light on there and, uh, and show you the process. But um, this early uh, <coughs> CJ2A build is, is off to a good start. And uh, I'll take you along and uh, show you some things along the way. Okay guys, I'm going to try and quickly go over this for you. Um, like I say, I had a full video out on this probably a couple of years ago. Uh, you can go check that one out if you want to see the whole build. But um, <clears throat> we got to set out all these tucks without overlapping them. So we have to actually uh, start here and come up and get that metal to, to shrink into itself. Um, and it can be done. Uh, you, you need to have some good hammer control. Take your time. Don't rush it and don't get ahead of yourself. And this is the hammer I like to use. <clears throat> this is a snap-on body hammer. It's got a cross peen on that side. And it's got a high crown face on that side. And everybody will tell you that you can't shrink 
with a stretching type hammer. Uh, this is this would be good to knock in. This is good for stretching this other area over here, uh, but it's also good for shrinking because it has such a high crown. You only hit in a very small area. Now, you know, just about 100% of the guys out there will tell you you, know, you can't use this kind of hammer for shrinking. You know, all the so-called experts. It works good for me. I like it. Um, I could probably build this whole panel with a carpenter's hammer or a sledgehammer. It just you need to have good hammer control. Um, I use a lot of different hammers on this to make it, um, but when I'm doing some some heavy shrinking like this, um, don't get fooled into thinking those serrated face shrinking hammers are going to do you any good. Uh, it's just it's all a gimmick. You need good hammer control. Like I said, I could shrink this with any hammer, but this is the hammer I like to use. Uh, this is my favorite hammer. If you um, if you use a hammer enough, you basically can do it with any hammer. But um, get used to a hammer, and uh, I'll show you how I do it with this hammer and set these tucks out. Okay, here we go. We're going to work the tucks from this point up. We're going to roll them over. We do one at a time. There's a little one there. You got to work everything nice and even, nice and even. Take each tuck down a little bit at a time. That metal right now, when we hit it, is shrinking into itself like that. It's just, it's just collapsing on itself. So it's not a super hard hit. It's not too light a hit. Uh, you need a perfect hit to shrink that. And work every little tuck that you have. Okay, if they start getting real tight like this, you could take the cross peen and set that out. It'll leave a little mark in there, but that'll come right out. See, now nothing's going to overlap over there now. Okay, we're gaining on it. We're getting there. Tune this up a little bit right here. Okay, we've got a little more to set out. We'll just keep setting those out. We can hit a little bit harder now because it's getting flatter. Metal's just working right into itself.
Okay, so don't let anybody tell you you can't shrink with this hammer. This is a wonderful hammer. You get used to it. It can do just about anything. Um, don't let anybody tell you you can't shrink with that. Okay, I got to final planish that out with a flat hammer and uh, tune up the rest of this. But that's basically how you get that to roll over. A lot of guys are telling me that the metal was folding over on itself. You have to set out each individual tuck. You have to get it, every tuck shrunk into itself and it'll come out like that. Now, uh, let me grab a new old stock panel. I want to show you this area on a new old stock panel. Okay, right there. Run your hand along that. It's all ripply. And this is a new old stock panel. This is a real, uh, original Willie's panel. Um, when it's folded over and folded again, there had to be somewhere for the metal to go. And, and it all got bunched up here. So on every Jeep, every CJ2, A3, A3B, this area here is going to be very, it's going to be bumpy. And you'll see that in the original paint and stuff. Um, and we've got the same effect on ours. I don't know if you can see it here, but... Right here is a split. That metal is torn right there. And this area goes from a heavy shrink to a heavy stretch. If you're not careful with your stretch, you split it wide open right here. Um, we got it real good on, on our panel, uh, but it was common on the original panels to have a big split right there. So, I just want to show you guys um, a little bit about how they made the panels back then. And like I say, the metal had to go somewhere, and what Willie's did was just let it kind of bunch up right here. But if we go over this with a flat face hammer, okay that is exactly what that should look and feel like. I'll try and get you in there. It's smooth, but you could just pick up a hint of the ripples with your finger. That's exactly what that should look like. We don't have a split here because we carefully stretch that. And I've got to do a little bit more. I gotta lay this edge down. Uh, but this is exactly what a Willie's panel should feel like and look like. You, you sand that with some 80 grit, get your epoxy primer on there, your primer and your paint, and that'll be absolutely perfect. And um, it'll look exactly like an original panel. Nobody will be able to tell the difference. So um, a little bit more to do on this. I'll pop it off the forms. Got to get the forms off the bench. Uh, and then we got to make the front quarter panels with the axe and the tool slot in it. So... Um, We've got to make another guy some panels today, so I'm going to end this one here. I'll uh, make those other panels for the other guy today, and uh, we'll continue on with this build. And the F-head builds are still moving along, and um, I'll show you what I can uh, when I can. Okay, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.